Are you going to bring it over, or shall yes, we come over? Yes, we'll come over. Okay, yeah. The den is the habitat of some real foodies. This is Nick's favourite time of the day. I've had one of those as well. And they're always hungry for the next culinary cash cow. Oh, sorry, you bastards. Tickling the dragon's taste buds. I think you need to work on the recipe. It doesn't actually... It doesn't actually taste very good. ..is notoriously difficult. I completely agree. I actually don't like them at all. I cannot wash my hands quick enough. It's horrible. Vile. And tempting them to invest... How many's Nick got left in his pot? That's probably the best indicator. That's still quite full. If Nick didn't eat it all, we know it's bad. Even tougher. It's absolutely rank. I'd rather eat my own toenails. You have managed to make peanut butter unpalatable to me, the peanut butter monster. Feel horrible, smell horrible and taste horrible. 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 I cannot sit here and pretend that I didn't just gag. I mean, that must be the first thing you've put in your mouth that you haven't liked, Nick, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody got a mint? So this entrepreneur has got his work cut out. Will he pass the taste test and, crucially, prove he has all the ingredients for business success? Good afternoon. My name is John Taig. I'm here to ask for £125,000 for 5% of my family's business, Tag Snack Foods Limited. Our purpose is to deliver the best quality products at great prices in order to gain trust and loyalty from our customers. By 2025, we aim to be the biggest family snack food business in the UK. Tags is currently stocked in 197 Asdas in the UK. It's stocked in 35 Tesco's across the North West. And I also have, I'm waiting an order from B&M Retail for 300 stores listing this week, with Morrison's interested in stocking tags from Q4. Our financial projections are for the year, financial year 16. We're looking to turn over 760,000 with a profit of 110,000. Financial year 17, we're looking for a turnover of 2.2 million with a profit of 395,000. And financial year 18, the turnover will be 4.8 million with a profit of 775,000. Would you like to try some products? What are they? Crisps, sorry. Why not? Let's try. Now they've ironed out the details of the product on offer, the dragons can't wait to see if this humble crisp will break the cuisine curse. Mm. Really good. John Tagg is offering just 5% of his business for a jumbo-sized £125,000 investment. Nick Jenkins is first to probe whether John's crisp business is the real McCoy financially. Um, tell me the history, the history of the company. When did it start? It started in April 2012. I used to run a crisp company that I turned round, and they suggested that when I was looking for something else to do, they just said, start your own crisp brand. I love crisps. It's one of my passions. Yeah. Okay, so, so you previously run a, a, yes. a was it a much was it a much bigger uh, crisp? Yeah, company? a lot bigger. Can I ask who it was? Yes, Seabrook Crisps. I was at MD for four years. What sort of turnover was that business? Um, when I joined, it was eleven million, and when I left, it was twenty-eight million. Okay, how long were you there? Uh, just under four years. And then did they sell? Why did no, you leave? Myself and the owner couldn't see eye to eye anymore. Okay, so what's your run rate? Give me an, a month now. I can give you an exact run rate in, in Asda, which is 10,000 bags per week. Turnover to the company, yeah. it's about 6,000 pound per week. Asda's the big one. Okay, you're in Asda. Yeah. So one of the bigger guys sees you there and says, right, we want to get you out. The indications for the first eight weeks show me that this product is standing up against the big boys. Let me tell you something. The market out there at the moment with supermarkets, there's a storm coming. The big boys who've got the power want to keep market share. They are the ones who I believe will drown you. I slightly disagree because I've, I've been against the tide with a business that I took from 11 to 28 million. Uh, supermarkets need additional brands coming in because they need leverage against the big brands. So if the supermarket does not back people like us, then they're just going to have the big brands who are going to squeeze and there's been no leverage for the shelf.
excellent CV, knows the market, and with a product that's already creating traction. It looks like John has all the elements for success, which has left Sarah Willingham a little confused. Why are you even here? What do you need a dragon for? That's a good question. I don't think... I mean, to be honest, the money will come in handy. It's not the most important thing. What I need a dragon for is to help me open some doors. I can't open every door yet. I know the market. I've been reasonably successful. You might have keys. Some of the doors I go into, I can open very easily, but some of the doors, even driving a tank through, I'm still not getting through that door. If you had to make a list of where you want to be... Sainsbury's. OK. Why? Can you do it? Because the only door I can't open right now. Oh, OK. What about Marks and Spencers? Marks and Spencers don't stock brands. They do have brands there. It's a new policy. I know that for a fact. They'd be very willing to look at whatever I invest in. You would still prefer Sainsbury over to Marks and Spencers? Yes. John's demonstrating a clear vision of exactly which retail shelves he wants his brand on. But supermarket supremo Deborah Meaden is torn. Oh. <laughs> this is hard, and I'll, I'll tell you why. This is very highly contested, and you need a really good reason why people are going to bother to choose you over existing brand. I actually think market condition is going your way. You know, I get that it's in the big store's best interests to make sure they've got alternatives sitting on their shelves. The question is, is it tags? Actually, I'm less attracted by tags. I think, like you say, it's a crisp. It's a good crisp. We all liked it. I think the branding does need work. But you obviously know your industry. So I'm going to make you an offer. And I'm going to offer you half of the money. And I want 10% of the business. And I'm going to be very specific over who you need to attract. And I have no idea whether they're interested or not. But Mr Jones and I have other food businesses together which work very well. Um, I have no idea. I haven't even looked down in that general direction. But when I say I'm offering half the money, the other half, for me, is not up for grabs across the dragons. If I'm going to co-invest, it would be with Peter. Deborah Meaden's offer puts the entrepreneur's number one choice of supermarket firmly within sight. Did you say 10%, Deborah, for yourself? I, I did. But her insistence on only partnering with Peter Jones means John is still far from the finish line. I, I have exactly the same um, feeling as Deborah about the business. But I was hoping that Deborah would offer 15%. Make a higher offer. Yeah, but I don't want to... I, I agree with you. I, would, I think you. Deborah and I are a perfect match for this. And the I do think it'll make a big difference. You won't have an offer from me unless you're in. But I felt that you would give away more equity, John, to get us on board. I think the offer would be for the, all of the amount, but it would be for 30%. And if that was the case, I would offer you half the money for 15%, but I'd like Deborah to offer the same. Yeah, I could, I, I'd, I'd be happy with that. Peter Jones is up for the challenge, but he's raised the stakes and wants 30% of John's company, or he's willing to do an equal split with Deborah Meaden at 15% each. Is Sarah Willingham poised to offer a better deal? I think you probably gathered I really like it. I really like you. I think I could work extremely well with you. I stood in your shoes, wouldn't pick those two dragons, and the reason I wouldn't is because they both do the same thing. 
they can both get you into Sainsbury's or they can both get you into the big retailers. You actually need one of them that will get you into the retailers and one of them that will open up other channels. Sarah, Peter and I don't have at all similar But businesses. he wants to get into... John wants to get into Sainsbury's. And many other person. stores. And I have phenomenal contacts in bars and pubs and clubs and restaurants as I own a few and have worked in them for years and years and years. I, I personally think, sat in your shoes, that mixing that up, and I would love to work with Peter, and I would be very happy to match their terms, but actually open up different doors, and I think it'd be a fantastic journey to go on. I think I could help you a lot. Some seriously ruffled feathers in the den as Sarah Willingham challenges the potential of a Jones Mead and partnership. She wants to partner with Peter herself and also wants 15% of the company. Is Nick Jenkins about to enter the bidding war? John, I'll, I'll make it short. I, th I, think, I think you're great. Um, enormous you. credibility. I'd be learning a lot about this business from you, not the other way around. And I think there are better offers that could be on the table, so I think I'm out. OK. John. It's a good business, and I would not be a good dragon if I felt I shouldn't make an offer. OK. My offer is I would give you all the money for 27%. Or I would go half the money for 15% with another dragon that I felt could offer something different to what I'm giving you. Then I'll go half. OK. Bags of deals to choose from as Deborah Meaden and Sarah Willingham compete to partner Peter Jones at a total equity stake of 30%. And now Tuka Suleiman's undercut them all at 27%, but all are bidding for a much higher stake than the 5% John originally offered. I, I'm, in, I'm in a bit of a dilemma. I'll be really honest with you. I was coming today, and, and I'm not going to pull on any hard strings, but this is my children's business, and I did not want to give any more than 10% away. Thank you, too, but um, I think for where I want to go and the speed that I need to go at, I would argue that Deborah and Peter are the best position for, to take us on the journey we need to go to. But, but Peter and Deborah, I'm going to be really honest, 30% will, will not happen. I'm quickly in my head, I was thinking, uh, you know, for the, for the two years to come together with 15%, but you allow me to buy some back once you give you the money back. Sorry, do you mean 15% in total? In total. We're way Well, for me, we're way away. Well, you, you are way off because it just doesn't incentivise me to own 7.5% of a crisp business. Would you, would you take 10 each? I would wouldn't. For 10% for, to... for £62,500. The return in this... Your, your margin's tight. OK. I... I can sum up and tell you where I am and really be honest. So, I mean, I would, I would on the proviso that, you know, 25% with the fact that I would need to buy some equity back when you get, you know, when you get your 62,500 back each. Can I say, I, um, I'm... This is very odd for a dragon, but honestly, I don't know how you feel, Peter, but I don't want to drag somebody kicking and screaming. No, and I, I don't. don't want to do the wrong, you know, adding that provision makes me feel like you're really uncomfortable with this. I think 30 is unreasonable and I, you know, apologise, but I think it is No, but then you should say, no, it's not for us and okay. we should draw a line on it and we wish you good on your way because I don't want to do it for 10%. I mean, I would do it for 12 and a half each. It's turned into... So I, I, for me, listen, business is hard work. 
the difference between having somebody motivated and demotivated, you know, that sense of dragging somebody kicking and screaming. And I'm just getting that now. I wouldn't be demotivated if you opened the doors of the supermarket you said you would tomorrow. So I say what I'm going to do. I hope you, I hope you deliver to what you say you're going to do. And you're sticking to the numbers. Yeah, if you come on board, it's 4.8 million. You're going to triple it. So it'll be no, 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 50. no. I'm not saying anything like that. You, oh, you said that's what your business was yeah. before I said I was interested. Yeah, yeah. I'm sticking to those numbers, Peter. So you're yeah. sticking to those numbers. But I'm saying I would want 30 percent. Okay. And to be fair, that would be just a little step too far. What's your feeling, Deborah? What would you like to do? Um, I think there's too many if, uh, ifs, buts and maybes. In this last five minutes, there's just been a little bit too much grit. And I ha don't know how you feel, Peter. No, I agree with the same. I feel uncomfortable pushing you to a limit which is unreasonable. Would you drop, if your investment was repaid first, would you drop to 10%? Yes. OK. Maybe that's the offer of compromise. So we get 15% each initially, and if you repay us in the next 12 months, we drop to 10% each. So, do you? You sure? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Negotiated like a seasoned pro as John secures a competitive deal with two new business partners and a potential introduction to a major retailer. Well, good. That, that was good investment. Well, I, I've given away a bit more than I wanted to. I was at the stage where I didn't want to let Deborah and Peter go, and I think it was probably, in hindsight, worth the equity. I would have been kicking myself if I walked away. 